Welcome back to the channel. So today I've got an X7 M50i in front of me, 2022 model. It is an individual Daytona Violet. I think it looks absolutely stunning on what is essentially the big fast wagon of the BMW group. So individual Daytona Violet. It is a pre-approved individual color for X5 and up right now. I think the X3 and X4 will be added shortly. But all you do is say you want that color, put the form in, boom, that color is approved and ready to roll. It's going to set you back $5,500. But uh, let's take a tour around to the rest of this gorgeous vehicle, which is basically fully loaded. So as you see, x 7 i comes standard with the laser lights, which look great against the purple. we got our extended shot line trim, putting the black grills on, inlets, etc. But, you know, thinking of it, I think Sirium Grey would have worked really well with Daytona Violet as well. And your biggest to date roundel on the car, X7, owns that. Just walk around, talk, take in this uh, Daytona Violet color. So I think it first appeared on the E36 M3, if I'm not mistaken. And has appeared on other vehicles as well. I think the E39 M5 as well, but lives on in individual paint. Look around the back here. So you saw the badging in Sirium Gray. Basically a quad exhaust as well. Powered by the N63 V8 4.4 liter twin turbo engine. It's 523 horsepower and 553 Torques. You can see how it changes based on the lighting because it is a metallic paint. It can be a very bright purple. So, if this was your car and you're into naming cars, what would you name it? Obviously, what comes to mind, Barney or even Prince, perhaps. Got any other ideas? Drop it in the comments below. Let's take a look at the inside and go over all the other fine details in this. Great looking X7. Let's see, interior is ivory white, full leather here with some black in it as well. I think obviously black would go fairly easily with this color. Maybe a cognac or a tartufo, but I'm on the fence on that one. But I think these are probably your two safest bets here ivory white and uh, black. So we've got also individual piano black trim along with the Bowers and Oakland sound system. So this is maybe one of the last X7s built with Bowers and Milken. So that went away, I think, was September 1st. But because this was a special order car in terms of colors, production got delayed a bit and the order was already in the system before those options were taken away for what appears to be future vehicles. That's some nice details on the leather here, so quilted. Some black piping as well, over here on the side. So let's take a look on the inside and go over more of the details. Got the individual piano black trim. I think it looks pretty gorgeous, of course. Be mindful of fingerprints. So as you can see on the steering wheel, we got our driver's assistance package. So another $1,700. Got our familiar iDrive live cockpit 7.0 with the corresponding heads up display as well and in the background you can see a student driver just making circles around here learning so which is good all right let's take a look at the build sheet so the x7 m50i starts hopefully you guys can see that staring at the sun here just under a hundred thousand dollars the eternal violet adds another 5500 ivory white extended merino letter Okay. Oh, maybe I had the letter dashboard. Oh, we'll see. $1,000. Cold weather package, another $1,100. We get you front and rear heated seats and five zone automatic climate control. We also added the dynamic handling package, which is a rarity on in stock or stock cars. So it gets you integral active steering, which means a tighter turning radius, as well as active comfort drive with preview. So adjust the dampers based upon what the car is seeing ahead of it. 
Driving Assistance Pro, we've already talked about. Luxury seating package, we get you the ventilated seats and massaging seats, another $1,100. The exec package, get you another $1,300 to get you the heated and cooled cup holders, as well as glass controls, which I think are a very nice touch. Other things include the piano back. Other things include include the piano black trim for one thousand eighty dollars, and the leather dashboard was eight hundred and fifty dollars. Bowers Munkins thirty four hundred dollars, as well as the extended shell and trim for three hundred dollars. So, all told, MSRP is one hundred and twenty one thousand five hundred seventy five dollars. And now there's a markup on the M performance models here across AutoNation stores, so we're adding another $10,000. So basically it's a $131,000 X7M50i. Again, just the messenger here. Don't get mad at me in the comments. I don't control pricing. You start to see our fine details on the glass controls, which include the gear selector, start stop button, as well as the iDrive controller. It's a very nice touch. Again, I think we mentioned this before, Glass control for the volume knob is now deleted, so no longer available. We've got our heated and cooled cup holders. We'll take a look at the back in a moment. But I think it's fairly nicely specced and probably a rare car that you're going to find on any dealer lot specced this, well, specced thusly, right, with an individual color. Let's take a look at the back seat. Of course, there's two rows as well. Close that. All right, so we got the bench seating here for the second row. You got your cup holders here in the fold down compartment. Got our dual zone climate control here in the second row. So I guess no white piping for the ivory white floor mats. Good thing they're black because it can get pretty dirty quickly. So we've got our obviously one not open but panoramic LED skylight. Or sky lounge, I should say. Let me double check on the sky lounge thing. All right, got your controls for access to the third row, which can be also accessed from the driver's controls. So in the back, so I can squeeze myself in here. So headdress up. So we've got another sort of sunroof in the back here, as well as along with climate control for the rear rear passengers. But it's not a bad place. Obviously, one legroom can be a little bit annoying. So we fold the seat back in. They all are controlled electronically, so it is a little bit slow, so you have to be patient on those things. But leg room, obviously one, I have none because I have the damn second row all the way back, but it can be fairly comfortable. All right, headroom is okay, although you are running into some limits here in the back seat. You see here, basically maybe a finger of a space there but obviously one smaller passengers could enjoy this back seat here so i guess the one the big compromise there is that you're losing a lot of luggage space so if you're on a big family trip you probably want to consider um accessories on the roof for storage and as brandon watson found out you probably don't want to have some a trailer hitch luggage carrier because you can actually burn your luggage even if it is to me. All right, moving out. Do one more control here, get the seat back. So it does push the driver's seat up a little bit so you can enable access to the third row. All right, so let's go take a look at the trunk space. So with all three rows up, in other words, max passengers, you don't have a lot of space here. If you're just carrying a couple of things, that's great. But long road trips, you have to consider alternatives for storage. 
So in the back, you can also control the seating. So you can go max passengers, which is what we're at right now. I can press max luggage. And what's going to happen is that third row is going to go down and fold flat. And the second row will also do the same. So you can see the driver's side, excuse me, the front row is moving up a little bit to enable those things to fold down. Again, a little bit of a slow process, but they're all electronically controlled, so easy up and easy down. Now looks like we have some sort of a lockout. Oh, I remember why. It's because the damn center console there is open, so that's why it's not going all the way up. So imagine I didn't do that. Your storage space is pretty good if you need to move big things around. So let's go back into Max Passenger. Oh, I think I'm locked out now. Yep, I'll have to adjust that manually in a bit. All right, so let's close that. Take one more walk around Daytona Violet so you guys can take this color in. Oh, I think it looks great. And we have the uh, basically fast wagon slammed right now. It's the lowest air suspension setting which is not for driving, only for ingress, egress. When the car is parked, you can get this low. Otherwise, once you start driving, it will raise up at least one position. If you're in comfort, it goes up two. Sport mode gets you down one level from normal. Of course, you go the other direction as well. But, whew, I really like the thumb of it. Let me know what you think about this color. Or, perhaps even what color individual would you spec with your X7 M50i. We'll catch you at the next one.